Hello, my dear friends of electronics. Today I want to show you in this video uh, how a common mode choke reacting for a signal. If you implement a common mode choke for filtering of a data line, uh, what are the challenges and what you have to take care and pay attention in the layout, in the schematic, and also of type of common mode chokes. There are many different types. So first of all, if you talk about common mode chokes, uh, a common mode choke, like you can see here in this uh, graphic, um, if you have a, a signal line, like a USB data line, then you can uh, have side by side with this cable something like a mobile phone. And the mobile phone is ringing. It's inducing automatic in these data lines some noise. And the signal himself, the, the, the USB data, is coming from the source to the load in a differential mode. The induced noise from a mobile phone side by the USB cable, it's made in a common mode. So now you have to uh, use for this common mode noise, of course, a common mode choke. A common mode choke will not affect the signal himself because during you put your useful signal from the USB data, you will have a compensation in this uh, common mode choke core. But for the noise which is induced on both lines together in the same time, they will generate right-hand rule, direction of the current, magnetic field induction. It will generate automatically by himself a field which will be catched from the core. So if you introduce a common mode choke in your system, it's very important that when you uh, use a common mode choke, your signal should be not in the area where you have this uh, differential mode filtering caused from the leakage inductance. Every common mode choke have a leakage inductance. The leakage inductance is the area where the impedance of this leakage in inductance will affect your signal. So the common mode rejection, which you can see here in this impedance, it is for the noise filtering. And if you have a noise like this green area and your signal is like this black area, your signal will be affected only from the differential filtering, not from the common mode filtering. So this is very important that you know that the signal, it will be compensated in a common mode choke and will be not be affected from his filtering effect. So now, if you use common mode choke, you can have them in two different winding methods. One of the winding methods is a bifiler, the other one is sectional. sectional. <coughs> These two different common mode chokes, they are existing in a bifiler and are existing also in a, in a sectional winding method. The difference between bifiler and sectional, like you can see here in these two different cores, you have them, one of those is completely round with the two wires together wound, the other one is side one and side, one, side second wound in a different direction. So if you use these two different cores, they will have different impedances in terms of differential mode. Both have the same common mode rejection. Additional, the leakage inductance, it depends now of the winding method. If you have a sector winding method, you have this uh, leakage inductance at least between 0.5 to 2% of the initial value of the common mode inductance value, uh, like a leakage inductance. If you have a bifiler uh, winding method, the leakage inductance is something roughly by 0 0.01 to maximum 0.1% of the initial value. So you have much, much lower leakage because the compensation is by bifiler cable very close and in the shortest area possible. Now, if you uh, compare this to different uh, common mode chokes, you will see that by a sectional winding, the power supply, like application power supply, is a good solution. You can put a capacity in front of him, you can put a second capacity after the common mode choke, and with this leakage inductance, you have also a kind of Pi filter. For additional, for power supply, if you have high voltage, you must uh, guarantee for this creepage voltage distance. That's the reason why it's not possible to use a bifiler winding or you must use a very expensive triple isolated cable, or you make this sector winding, so you have a space between these two different induction, and then you have automatically higher voltage separation. For a data line, you can use also a bifiler 
wallet cable because normally you don't have that high voltage or even also for power supply uh, maximum 80 volt DC you can use as well a bifinal cable but you know if you have less leakage inductance and you have a power supply you don't need uh, such uh, application because in a power supply you don't have a data where this leakage will be affected. This is a, a picture of I opened that kind of uh, choke which is normally in that size so it's very small package and it has a cap here and after I open this cap you can see them this is the opened one and you can see them how small they are and this uh, toroidal core it's mounted with two different color of cable just to see uh, left hand right hand is have this kind of uh, sector winding and the other one it's again the same core, the same number of turns, the same inductance, same common motor section, just the winding method <coughs> now is a uh, bifinal rounded one. So this is a big difference between the construction and if you compare now uh, the uh, sectional and common mode, the same uh, inductance value, you will see that have almost the same common mode rejection. We have a small tolerance, this is measured value. But the big difference is between the bifinal and sectional winded one, the leakage inductance, the differential mode impedance. So you can see if you have a signal something by 10 uh, megahertz, a 10 megahertz with a sector wounded one, you have already attenuation of 20 ohm of this uh, signal. And if you have a bifinal wounded method and you have the same common mode choke, at 10 megahertz, you have almost nothing. You cannot even measure it. So low uh, leakage, so low uh, attenuation to your signal. Like you can see also in this uh, Red Expert uh, calculation, I introduced in Red Expert this both 51 microhenry sector and bifilar wounded one. You can see this common mode impedance that you have a almost very close to each other common mode rejection. Of course, they have some differences here because of the capacity of the winding of the wire. And in the differential mode, you can see again here, if you have a signal like a 10 megahertz signal, it will be affected as well in uh, differential mode from this uh, sector winded one with 200 ohm and already here by that one by 5 ohm. So this is really measurement value. So this is very easy to simulate that in, uh, and calculate in a Red Expert. This is again for the USB port. If you want to filter them, we recommend for a USB 2.0 to use at least um, an inductance value of um, 90 ohm impedances. That's the reason why we put for um, USB 2.0 90 ohm. The system impedance of this uh, USB data line is between 90 to 110. Uh, if you want to have high speed, 90 ohm is quite a good value. You can't use here a sector winded one. It must be bifilar with the lowest leakage inductance possible. Um, size 08, 05, even 06, 03 is possible to get them standard uh, components. Um, I recommend read the trilogy of magnetics. They are the application described exactly how to filter, how to handle. The advantage of this uh, common mode choke, it is that sometimes it could happen that you have a 10 megahertz signal and you have a 10 megahertz common mode noise. Now, how to filter or how to build a filter which can um, distinguish between signal and noise? It's quite very difficult. You need artificial intelligence filter, which is not possible to build today. So the only one solution it is to, in, instead of using two differential inductance, which will filter also not only the signal, <coughs> not only the noise, it will filter also the signal itself. Um, instead of using two differential inductance, use a coupled inductance called common mode choke. And a 10 megahertz signal can couple through him, can come back, it's compensated by himself. And the signal which is uh, uh, not affected, it won't be filtered, but if you have a common mode noise on this signal, it will generate by himself a magnetic field. And this magnetic field will be filtered without touching the signal himself. So this is a big advantage of using a common mode show. The filter can not touch the signal because it's coming through and back. The only one effect it will be from the differential 
mode, and the differential mode, if it's very slow, low or uh, very weak, it will, won't affect the signal, but the noise himself will be cancelled. I have here experience made on a USB 1.0 because it was a device for um, a webcam, it was not so high resolution webcam. And if you put between a computer and a webcam, a uh, 0.5 meter cable and you induce with the RF generator some noise on it, you can measure in different points. <coughs> you can measure in different points. One of the measurement points is directly on the motherboard, another one on the USB webcam, on front of the common mode choke and after the common mode choke. We introduced the common mode choke in this uh, data line and uh, make this eye diagram measurement. And you can see on the motherboard side, the signal, the eye diagram is very clean, no uh, intrusion in this uh, sector. It's excellent working. If you put that noise generator on and you generate kind of noise on it, you will have a lot of noise already. The triggering makes some trouble. And after the common mode choke, you can see it's still some noise, but the signal is not affected. So now we make some experiment and try to increase these two differential um, inductance on the data lines and see what it happened. So introducing just instead of common mode choke, uh, chip bit ferrite, we saw that this is not a good solution. A common mode choke will affect with 32 ohm the noise. It will be filtered. We did measure the data fail rate and we saw with 32 ohm we have a fail rate of 3.4 promil. Then with the 41 ohm it was 2.55 promil. Then 77 already decreased to 2.05 promil, and with 363 ohm, it was a fail rate almost by 0%, USB 1.0. Now, instead of using a common mode choke, we change to chip bit ferrite and make the same trick. If you put chip bit ferrites in the data line, already by 35 ohm, you can see that the signal is already affected. If you increase to 110 ohm is much more affected already. You have a violation of this eye diagram. So this is not, not a good solution because the fail rate already by 35 ohm increased to 4.4 per mil, and at 110 ohm you have 7.5 per mil. So this is not a solution to filter the data line. With the chip bit ferrite, you can filter at USB 2.0, 3.0, whatever. You can filter the power supply, the 5 volt power supply, but not suitable for data lines. Another important thing is the layout for a common mode choke. It's not allowed if you use a common mode choke that your dirty signal is coming on, on very close to the filtered signal because then you will couple back on this area the noise which you try to aim and filter it. If you make a redesign, also it's not, a, not good enough if you just turn the common mode choke in a vertical position and you will go in and out from the common mode choke because if you have this area, the noise can jump on the PCB to the pad to the filtered area and it won't be so good filtered. It's much more important if you use a common mode choke, you use them like a galvanic, not separated transformer. You use them in inline, you have one side the dirty signal area and you put a common mode choke, you keep the trace away as possible. Of the other side, you have the clean area where you uh, filter the signal, not affected by a common mode noise. Many people make mistakes in the design layout, uh, in this uh, different common mode choke. My recommendation is keep away your finger for auto tracking button. Don't push this auto tracking. This is the most difficult if uh, you push this uh, auto routing or auto tracking. It's not so good for for uh, PCB layouting. Yeah, that's all about common mode chokes. I hope you enjoy it. Watch my next videos.